Yes. Thank you, Jeannie. We are grateful to be on the traditional territories of the Iroquois and the Ashtonabe nations. And we are also grateful to have Jeannie Gilchrist to lead us in the uh, keyboard and in the hymns, Vivian Todd for reading the scriptures, Yvonne Weston for the Ministry of Music, Mariah Bercy who will lead us in the children's worship, and Reverend Maya Douglas who will deliver the sermon today. Whoever you are, wherever you are from, However many times you have been to prison, whether you doubt or believe, however many tattoos you do or do not have, you are welcome here. In these times of isolation and social distancing, when we, may, when we can be lonely even though we may not be alone, we know that each and every one of us can pass the peace of Christ among us, whether in person or virtually. Like a mighty river flowing is the perfect peace of God. Please join Jeannie in hymn number 267, Like a Mighty River Flowing, verses 1 and 3. Jeannie? Thank you, Jeannie. What if God longs for us? A conversation, a relationship. What if God had been dreaming of a future with us and for us? What if God called to hear our voice to say, I miss you and let's make plans? Would we answer? Would if answering just might change everything? God calls to us right here in ordinary life. Are we listening? Will we join the conversation? What might happen next?
Dear God, we thank you for our church. While some might think of windows and doors, we are praising for your spirits and hearts. The people who are here today are remarkable through your grace. We can't praise you enough for your unique way that you have blended the talents of individuals into a masterpiece of joy. May we love one another and be evidence of your love. Amen. Teach me, God, one to wonder, to see, to let your beauty and let your world of beauty capture me. Please join Jeannie with hymn number 299, Teach Me, God, to Wonder, verses 1 and 2. Jeannie. Thank you, Jeannie. And Jesus said, Suffer the little children, for they come unto me. And please welcome Maria Bercy as she leads the children's worship. Maria? Hi, everyone. How are you? Uh, good morning. So I want to read from you, to you from this book. It's called Bagels from Benny. It's by Aubrey Davis, and it's illustrated by Dushan Petrasik. And it's kind of long, so we won't have much time to chat afterwards, but it is based on a Jewish folk tale from Spain. And if you don't know, a synagogue is like a church for Jewish people, for our Jewish friends. And the Torah is like part of the Bible. And it's a holy book for Jews. And it's uh, mentioned in the book. So don't get confused. They're just talking about a special holy book. Okay? So this is Bagels for Benny. I hope you like it. Sun was just waking up when Benny went downstairs to Grandpa's bakery. He always helped Grandpa before he went to school. He swept the floor and dusted the shelves. He put cookies and cakes on the counter. He put bagels and buns in the bins. Benny loved to help his Grandpa. People bustled in and out of Grandpa's bakery all day long. Some bought bread and some bought cake. Some bought apple strudel. Everyone bought bagels. Grandpa baked the best bagels in town. So crusty outside, Mrs. Silver declared. So soft inside, added Mr. Gold. You put love in your bagels, gushed Mrs. Green. Thank you so much. Grandpa handed Mrs. Green a bag full of bagels. Why thank me, he asked. And who else should I thank, laughed Mrs. Green. Just then the clock struck eight. We'll be late for work, cried Mrs. Silver. Dear me, ga gasped Mr. Gold. Toodle-a-doo, sang Mrs. Green, and they scurried out the door. Benny was puzzled. Why shouldn't Mrs. Green thank you? You, th you make the bagels. Grandpa lifted Benny onto the counter. Benny, he asked, aren't bagels made with flour? Yes, Benny said. Doesn't bit flour come from wheat? Yes, Benny nodded. Where does wheat come from? From the earth, answered Benny. And who made the earth? God did, Benny replied. Grandpa smiled. Then thank God for the bagels. It was a good idea. Benny closed his eyes. Thank you, God, he whispered. Then he waited. Did you hear me? Did he hear me, Grandpa? You ask difficult questions, Grandpa chuckled. God always hears you. But Benny wasn't so sure. If God had really heard him, why didn't he answer? At school that day, Benny did no work. He didn't read and didn't write. At recess, he sat alone in the shade of a tall maple tree. What's wrong, asked his teacher. What's wrong, asked his friends. I'm thinking, Benny sighed. Benny was still thinking when he went to bed that night. Maybe God didn't answer because I didn't thank him properly. He yawned. Maybe there's some other way to thank God for his bagels. Benny fell asleep. 
Early Friday morning, a little sunbeam danced into Benny's bedroom. It jumped onto his pillow and tickled his eyelids until they opened. Benny's eyes sparkled in the sunlight. Suddenly, he had an idea. He leapt out of bed and ran downstairs. That morning, Benny worked very hard in the bakery. Grandpa, he asked, would you pay me for my work? Grandpa raised his eyebrows. Hey, you, how much? A big bag of bagels, replied Benny. Why bagels, Grandpa asked. It's a secret, whispered Benny. Grandpa laughed and gave Benny a huge bag full of bagels. Benny took them to the synagogue. This is where people speak to God, he thought. Maybe I can thank him here. He opened the door and peeked inside. It was dark and very still. Benny trembled. Maybe I shouldn't. It's not prayer time. But Benny took a deep breath and walked in. He tiptoed past empty wooden benches, climbed the stairs to a big wooden cupboard, the holy ark. His heart pounded. He could barely breathe. Maybe I shouldn't open it. Maybe God won't like it. The Torah is inside, and it's his special book. But Benny took a deep breath and pulled the doors open. King of the universe, he whispered, I brought you some bagels. I know you make them, but you never taste them because grandpa sells every last one. Benny put the bag in the ark and closed the doors. Thank you for making the best bagels in town, Benny whispered. Then he ran off to school. On Saturday, Benny and grandpa went to the synagogue. Everyone prayed and sang, but not Benny. He kept his eyes on the doors of the ark. Had God eaten the bagels, he wondered? When the ark was opened and the Torah was taken out, Benny looked inside. The bagels were gone. His heart skipped a beat and his eyes danced. I'm so glad you liked them, he whispered. I'll bring you more. Week after week, Benny worked in Grandpa's bakery. Every Friday, Grandpa gave him bagels. Every Friday, Benny gave the bagels to God. Grandpa became curious. What was his grandson doing with all those bagels? One Friday, he followed Benny to the synagogue. He waited in the shadows and watched. They're still warm, just the way you like them, murmured Benny. He opened the ark and put the bag of bagels inside. What are you doing, Grandpa bellowed. Benny spun around. Grandpa, he got, gasped. I'm thanking God. You're putting bagels in God's holy ark, cried Grandpa. But he likes the bagels, insisted Benny. Every week he eats them all. Oh, Benny, Grandpa laughed. God doesn't need to eat. He doesn't have a mouth or a stomach. He doesn't even have a body. He doesn't, Benny frowned. Then where do the bagels go? Grandpa looked at the ark. He looked at Benny. He stroked his beard and scratched his head. I don't know, he said. Suddenly, the front door creaked open. Grandpa put a finger to his lips and pulled Benny into the shadows. A man walked in in a tattered coat. He took the bag of bagels from the ark. Oh, Lord, I was so hungry, he sobbed. For weeks you fed me. From heaven you sent such beautiful bagels. He tucked the bag under his coat. I have good news for both of us, he said. I have found work. He wiped away his tears. Now I can feed myself and you can stop baking bagels. A man smiled as he quietly closed the cupboard. You help me, Lord. Now I promise to help others. Then he left. Benny buried his face in Grandpa's coat and wept. God didn't eat my bagels. That poor man took them. Grandpa's eyes grew wide with wonder. Benny, he asked, you wanted to thank God? Yes, Benny sniffed. Well, you did, said Grandpa. How, Benny asked. Did you give the bagels to a hungry man, asked Grandpa. Yes, Benny replied. Didn't he promise to help others? Yes, Benny nodded. Then you made the world a little better, said Grandpa. I did, Benny wondered. You did, Grandpa smiled. And what better thanks could God have? The end. Okay, so that's our book for this week, Bagels from Benny from the Markham Public Library. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And don't forget to help give thanks to God for all the blessings in your life. Help somebody else. Okay. See you guys. See you next week. Thank you, Maria. Please pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
and let us listen to the Word of God with Vivian Todd. Vivian? Good morning. Today's reading is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Vivian. And a huge thank you to Ken Brown, who organizes the scripture readers for each uh, Sunday. The Ministry of Music is the universal language of the soul. Please welcome Avon Weston with Waymaker by Sanich. Avon? Good morning, St. Andrews. Good morning. Can you hear me? We can hear you. The video hasn't come up yet, but we can hear you, Vivian. The video is Sorry, on. Sorry, uh, Yvonne. The video is on. I, I know Ken and um, Lisa are in the background working feverishly, but uh, we'll be able to hear you even if you wanted to go ahead and they may be able to get the video to work as, it, as we go it's, forward. You see me in the little box. So you see me in the top, right? So maybe right. you, okay, well, I'm here. <laughs> Good morning, St. Andrews. I think um, this morning, the song that I'm going to sing is called Waymaker. I'm singing it to dedicate, to dedicate it to my mother, who most of you know passed away a couple months ago. The song suits her so much because in spite of all the hardships that she endured, she was still able to make a way for all the children, people around the village and everywhere. I love you, mommy. We all love you. This song, Waymaker, is what you were and you still are. We make a miracle work 
Gather round now and pay heed as Reverend Maya Douglas delivers today's sermon. Reverend Douglas. Good morning. The Greek scripture reading, the gospel today, is taken from Matthew. It is in chapter 11, verses 16 to 19, then verses 25 to 30. I give you time to find it in your Bibles and read with me. Matthew 11, verses 16 to 19, verses 25 to 30. Let us hear what the Spirit is telling the church. But to what will I compare this generation it is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and you have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May God bless her understanding these words from Holy Scripture. Amen. There is an East Indian fable that I love to share. It is called The Six Blind Men and the Elephant. Do you know it? I think when we reflect on racism and the gospel, spoiler alert, it's a great illustration of what happens when we speak about the elephant in the room, if you will. The six blind men and the elephant goes like this. There were once six blind men who stood by a dirt road every day and would complain that they heard of elephants, they've heard of elephants, but they've never seen one. Well, by and by, an elephant was being ridden and the driver overheard their complaints. Of course, you've never seen one. You cannot see, said the driver. 
But if you let us touch her, we could see what kind of animal she is, they replied. And so the driver obliged. The first man put his hand on the elephant's side. Well, well, he said, now I know all about this beast. He is, she is exactly like a wall. The second felt along the elephant's tusk. My brother, he said, you are mistaken. He's not like a wall. Round and smooth and sharp, this animal is like a spear more than anything else. The third happened to take hold of the elephant's trunk. Both of you are wrong, he said. Anybody who knows anything about anything can see that this elephant is like a snake. The fourth reached out his arms and grasped one of the elephant's legs. Oh, how blind you all are, he said. It's very plain to me that an elephant is like a tree. The fifth was a very tall man, and he chanced to take hold of the elephant's ear. The blindest man ought to know that this beast is exactly like a fan. The sixth was very blind indeed. And it was some time before he even could find the elephant at all. At last, he seized the elephant's tail. Oh, foolish fellows, he cried. You surely have lost your senses. This elephant is not like a wall or a spear or a snake or a tree. Neither is he like a fan. But any person with sense can see that an elephant is exactly like a rope. Then the elephant moved on. And from then on, the six men, six blind men, sat on the roadside every day and quarreled about what an elephant was like. Each believed that he knew just how the elephant looked like, and each called the others hard names because they did not agree. People who have eyes sometimes act foolishly. Our reading today has Jesus complaining about how foolish the people are. They have met John the Baptist, a man in sheepskin, eating locusts in the desert, full of dreary news that they need to repent for the kingdom was at hand. Repent! And they have met Jesus, a man clothed in a robe, walking with his 12 friends of ill repute, mind you, um, sharing in table fellowship of eating and drinking with even the most sinful of men. and eating and drinking with women. And the people reject them both. Jesus compares them to children playing in a marketplace who cannot decide whether they should play wedding or funeral. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. Even when we see we are blind to the salvation God has handed out to us. Even in the embodiment of wisdom herself, Sophia, God incarnate, standing before us, we remain blind. Racism is a sin. Anything that separates us from God is a sin. Mm -hmm. Anything that prevents us to take from taking part in God's loving redemption in the world is a sin. We know this. It prevents us from taking part in God's mission of loving one another. Racism is a sin. Yet, just in this week, I attended a community meeting over Zoom with some politicians and some community leaders and some construction site uh, executives to discuss nooses being hung around in the East End construction sites. And I heard excuses. Well, maybe the person hanging them just needs to learn what a noose is. Surely the executive members of the construction company need to learn about racism, they said. Maybe the person 
we have heard about it, but didn't know. Maybe the person that did it or the rumors of the person who's, who's done it is not really that person. We don't want to get involved in rumors. And so I heard as the police investigator pleaded with them, yes, 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 actually, please give us leads. And I watched as the construction site executive brushed him off. I was amazed. I saw as this same executive relied on a black worker to explain how the company could become more diverse. I heard him say his, his baby daughter, he wished that his baby daughter would sometimes get into construction and thought, hmm, that's an odd goal, but okay, sure. I heard them rely on the brown and black people to explain away racism, to do all of the work. And I heard the hospital, the hospital that had the nooses hanging, Michael Guerin Hospital, previously East York General Hospital. I heard them mention their motto over and over again. Diversity is our strength. Diversity is our strength, they said. Even when the motto didn't actually match what they were talking about, they, they plugged that in. Diversity is our strength. Yes, good. But two nooses have shown up on your construction site. That's a hate crime. It's a hate crime. Sin involves hate. Racism is a sin, period. It's an elephant, not a wall, not a spear, not a rope, not a tree, not a fan. It's an elephant. The good news, yes, there is good news always. The, the gospel tells us that even when Jesus was frustrated with the people's inability or resistance to see him for who he was, who he is, the Messiah, God continues to reveal God's self in him. He throws his hands up in praise saying, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and revealed them to infants. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son. And here is the invitation. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him, then Jesus chooses us. My friends, the good news is that we are invited to know God, though we may not completely see. We may not completely see the way clearly. We may actually make excuses. We are invited to set aside, to dismantle anything that separates us from God, to step over it and to reach a God who is continually revealing herself through Jesus, who is continually calling us. If only we not get distracted by how each and every one of us sees things differently. Black lives matter. It is sad that it needs to be said, but black lives, indigenous lives, brown lives, they matter. It's tiring to say this. It is frightening to say yes. But lives that have been threatened by violence, by senseless acts of violence, matter. And we, my friends, are not only called to hear it, we as followers of Christ, who are told to love one another as he has loved us, who have been told that if one sheep is lost, he 
the good shepherd would leave the other 99 and search for the one horrible economics. We are called to say black lives matter. We are called not only to believe it, but to do the work, to do the work and to find ways to understand why right now it doesn't matter. We are called to find out the significance of a noose, to reach out, feel up that elephant in the room, to walk around it and truly take it in so that we may know who our enemy is. For then and only then will we truly be able to understand and to comfort one another. This, to this, Jesus invites us when he says, come to me, all who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Salvation, a sacred rest is easy. Deliverance from pain and injustice is light. But the work, God knows, the work is not easy and the burden is not light. And so we must take rest in our Lord Jesus Christ. We must take rest. We must do the work that we are called to do. There is so much to be done when we are asked to love one another. If only we would see, if only we would learn, if only we would believe. Jesus is inviting us into a new way of being. For my yoke, he says, is easy, and my burden is light. May it be so. Amen. Thank you for your attention, and thank you to Catherine for arranging for Reverend Douglas to record and send us this message. Let there be light. Let there be understanding. Let all nations gather face to face. Please join Jeannie with hymn number 679, Let There Be Light, verses 1 and 2. Jeannie, I don't think your mic is on. Jeannie, turn your mic on. Remembered. Sorry about that. Lord, hear our prayer of confession. You call us to faith, 
and yet we choose to control and certainty. You call us to see your divine face and in the face of our neighbor, and yet all we see are flaws. You call us to ask, but we don't want to risk disappointment. You call us to be your voice of justice in the world, and yet we stay silent. You call us to let go of our worry, and yet we cling to it and give it a microphone. You call us to forgive, and yet we keep running lists of how we have been wrong. You call us to rest and delight, yet we cram our days full of frantic productivity. Forgive us, God, and help us forgive ourselves. Amen. In Christ, there is no condemnation. There is only love. Your God is not judging you, but abounds in compassion and affection for you. This is the time uh, in the service where we would present our offering. And we give some gifts that God has given to us so that gifts may be given to others. Gifts may be in the form of money or goods or services that we can share. I have become aware that David Stenick, a member of our church, is in a very difficult situation. Due to unfortunate circumstances, David will be without a home as of next Friday morning. It is our hope that someone in St. Andrew's family or someone you know has a room or a flat to rent. You will recognize David as a person who manages the sound and video system during our Sunday morning services when we are worshiping in the church building. While steps are being taken to work with local agencies to find a formative, affordable permanent residence, this can take some time, and such there is a critical need for assistance in the interim. If you or someone you know may be able to help, please contact Carol Wild Goose as soon as possible for, for, for more information. Carol can be reached at carolwildgoose at rogers.com or by phone at 416-418-5426. Once again, 416 416- 4185426 Thank you to all who are able to volunteer at St Andrew's United Church by communicating and sharing with others in the congregation by sharing their resources through their offering by maintaining or increasing their par donation by mailing in or dropping off their donation to the secure mailbox at the front door of the church or electronically through their bank or by clicking on the donate now button on the website. Together, we are building a different but stronger church here at St. Andrew's United Church. Let us join Jeannie in singing hymn 540, Grant Us God the Grace of Giving. Jeannie. Thank you, Jeannie. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, accept what we offer today, our checks and cash, our faltering steps, our brokenness, our leftovers, our hope, our risking, our lives. Bless and transform all that we offer and all that we hold back, that a new life may be ours to celebrate and share in Jesus' name. Amen. And please join me in the prayer of the peoples. Lord, your son taught us to pray and never lose heart. But frankly, God, there are times that wear us down and we feel faint-hearted. It is at times like these that we need to hold each other up in prayer. It is times like these that we need to encourage each other. It is times like these that we need to be there for one another. It is times like these that we need to pray for those who are in need. But God, it is not just for those who are in need, it is also for the justice that we cry out. We plea for those who cannot speak for themselves. We stand up for those whose rights have been violated. We seek peace and justice for those who need both. We pray for justice for those, are, for those who are the weakest. 
and we thank you for your justice at work in this world. We thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you for your protection and concern, and we thank you for your mercy that will pour out with your justice. We remain yours in faith. Amen. May God, may the God of hope go with us every day, filling our lives with love and joy and peace. Please join Jeannie in, hymning, in singing hymn 424, May the God of Hope Go With Us, verses 1 and 2, followed by our choral commissioning. May the God of Hope Go, to, may the God of hope to go With Us Every Day. Jeannie? What you hold, may you always hold. What you do, may you always do and never abandon. But with swift pace, light step, and unswerving feet so that even your steps stir up no dust, go forward. The Spirit of God has called you. Thank you for joining together with us this morning in our virtual worship service. And thank you to those who have helped make this worship service happen. And a special thank you to two people, Lisa Bruce and Ken Wildgoose, who are working behind the scenes, furiously staring at their computer screens and thumbing their mouse and keyboards to make sure that this worship service will run technically smoothly. And I might add, 
that Ken is able to do this from his cottage in the heart of beautiful Muskoka. But the bandwidth is not as good at the cottage, so Ken has loaded two computers into his vehicle and for the entire service has been parked under a cell tower in order to get a strong enough signal. Thank you, Ken, for your dedication. We are all here for the glory of God. And remember, our coffee time starts our next service next Sunday at 9.30 in the morning. Come, be a part of the conversation. Love to see you next week. And please stay and listen as Jeannie plays the postlude, Come Sweet Peace.